Hello, everybody. My name is David Carter. I'm the Director of Education and Outreach for Charleston Jazz. And we're here today with a very good friend of mine, Mr. Cole Davis. Thanks for being here, Mr. Davis. You're welcome. Hey, so Cole is a, a, a teacher in our district now in, in the Berkeley County, Charleston area. And we're really excited to learn more about his experiences and the things he's going to offer uh, students in the classroom. So without further ado, Mr. Davis, can you tell us a little bit about your musical background, where you went to school, uh, your studies? Have you been playing music for a long time? Okay, I um, guess I'll just work backwards. Um, I started out singing at church, like maybe around like four or five in like our little kids choir. Um, and then I picked up piano when I was in the fourth grade, private piano lessons. And I did that all the way up through 12th grade. Um, Let's see, I started band in sixth grade and on trumpet. And so I did trumpet and piano kind of all the way up through high school that kept me busy. Um, did show choir and advanced course my senior year. That was the only year I could fit in my schedule. And then I did my undergrad at USC on trumpet. And I got to accompany a lot of people for seminars and recitals on piano as well. Um, once I left there, I went to South Florence High School where Mr. Carter was on my <laughs> on, a, on on the staff there. Yeah. Um, and from then, let's see, I moved down here for a little while and then I moved back home. Um, eventually got going in Darlington County School District and I was there for 13 years, I believe. So just finishing up at Mayo High School for Math, Science and Technology where I was teaching band, orchestra, chorus, and piano lab and show choir. So um, and, and orchestra. What? Hold on. Don't <laughs> take that back. What did you teach? What all did you teach? And don't go. Don't go zoom past that. Like I just teach <laughs> fifty things. And take, <laughs> so take it back. Tell us. Tell us again. Oh man, <laughs> band, chorus, orchestra, and uh, piano lab during the day, and then show choir was extracurricular. What did that look like? What did what did uh, show choir stuff look like? Just curious for you. Um, actually just a mass conglomeration extension of the day because sh show choir ended up being basically, well, we had the show choir and then we had the live instrumental ensemble that would play. Um, it was band and orchestra kids in that. And of course the chorus kids and show choir. And then eventually we got to having a lot of the instrumentalists that could also sing or also discovered they could sing and dance. So. Um, you know, it then became a thing of, okay, which ones are they going to play? Which ones are they going to sing on? So it was, um, that was probably the highlight of it. Just having all those kids together at one time doing all those different things. The only downside of it was me being the only person in charge and having to, you know, get all the things together individually and put all that together. So I, bet that I feel like, like I lot. became, yeah. yeah, it was a lot. I felt like I became pretty good at that. <laughs> I know for a fact you became better at that. <laughs> what uh, what are you, what do you have going on now? Do you have any projects coming up? Are you? Uh, I know you're going to be teaching at a new school. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Um, yeah. So I actually interviewed for the job before. I think a week before. Thing people started talking about COVID, like in the country. I think we had already had a couple cases, but nobody, as far as school, was talking about COVID. We were still planning, you know, all the way up through May and June. So I interviewed with the principal in February, Valentine's Day actually, by phone. And um, of course, what, second week of March, um, found out about all this stuff. And that's, I, I kind of worried a little bit. Um, I don't know why, just a natural worry, but just the uncertainty of it. Like it's exciting, but it's still, you know, the fact that we don't quite know what to expect mm -hmm. um, is a little unsettling, but it's exciting too, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I know whatever, it turns out to be, I know you're going to have a great time with the students. So thank you. I what, hope uh, so. Oh, I know. So no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so what's some advice that you would give an up and coming musician? It can be music related. It can be um, life related, business related. Is there some just quick tip advice you would give a musician? Yeah. Um, have, have a lot of goals in mind. Have always have something to fall back on. Um, don't feel like you have to do everything you want to do at one time. Um, 
I think that was, uh, that's a big weakness of mine. Like COVID, I felt like for me, COVID was a sign from God saying, all right, you need to, you really need to sit down. You need to take some time you for you you know i was doing school stuff i was doing uh, music at church i was doing music at the theater uh, i was doing community band um and that was my that was my uh definition of taking it easy <laughs> mm, uh-huh. <laughs> because i wasn't doing the usual other four and five things in addition to that but um i feel like it, there's a lot there are a lot of musicians and there are a lot of people that gig and there are a lot of people that you know we do things for weddings we do things for friends communities, parties, all kinds of things. And there's always a need for us. Like no matter how many of us, there's always a need for us. So Mm -hmm. don't feel like we have to accept every single thing Mm -hmm. that comes our way. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. That's, and it's, it's flattering to be asked to do all those things, but you got to think about your mind. You got to think about your body, (laughs) Mm -hmm. your health, Um, your overall health, your health. You do, (laughs) you really do. Um, Cause I mean that, that can eventually, you know, take a turn for, for the worst for you. So yes, enjoy what you're doing going and yes take advantage of the opportunities but don't do it to the point to where you just you can't do what you love to do anymore i think that's great advice that's sound (laughs) advice buddy who are some of your musical influences right now um you mean as far as like personally or like just like celebrities is anything whatever sure who are some of your musical okay uh biggest is my dad um he was he is a teacher he taught for almost 40 years in the public school system um he's also been the music director at uh trinity baptist church for years i'm not going to try to guess i don't remember how long it's been <laughs> um so i was always at church with him i was always at his school performances you know trying to pick things up from him learning from him um i think the most fun i've had as far as both of us teaching at the same time was um for state chorus auditions and the weeks getting ready for that he like it was a it was like an annual thing like he would bring his students over to mayo um you know for our students Mm -hmm. to get together to work on that we'd get you know it was it was just always good to see it was always a lot of fun you know to see students just immediately bond over that um and then for his spring show at the end of the year for show choir uh, i'd take my students over to help you know with them and we'd get pick up some tips from them and it's another opportunity for them to, to get together and kind of see how um, my dad and I would work together and then just to see them working together like that. So um, he's my biggest influence. Uh, Mike Jones, my high school band director, um, another huge influence. Um, I think I remember like eighth or ninth grade, I remember thinking that I wanted to be a band director, but I wasn't sure. And he definitely like solidified that for me. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, yeah. As far as like artists, uh, Stevie Wonder, John Legend, Alicia Keys, those are the like the three that I always fall back on. Probably specifically Stevie Wonder. Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm always finding myself falling back on on his music and just kind of looking and listening in awe of like, <laughs> you know, how in the Definitely. world can somebody write something like produce stuff so beautiful you know <laughs> mm-hmm, and it's man. still like it still means something it's still big it's still popular so stevie stuff is relevant always will be I always think. Yeah, always sure. like universal yeah Where, speaking of the universe uh yeah. if you could travel anywhere in the world right now and just teleport there spend some time there despite these covid lead oh. times where would you go <laughs> these covid lead times um <laughs> Man, I don't know. Probably somewhere in Europe. I'll just say Europe. Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) And just, I'd probably spend like a month or or two there and just soak up everything. Um, I don't even want to start snatching countries out of the air as far as like music history, (laughs) but I would definitely want to hit those places up and see, you know, monuments and churches and i mean just i just want to go and soak up all that so i would just say europe but definitely you know wait in a few months before <laughs> for sure, i would even think sure. about trying to do that no not right now just rest <laughs> rest while you can oh yeah well mr davis thank you for taking time to talk with us tonight and uh, for sure so we can just learn and just i appreciate you man so uh, yeah i appreciate you thank you for having so, me well man have a good night everybody else thank, thank you, you. Have a good night.